John Cronin, captain and member of the Airline Employees for, for, for Health Freedom. Uh, good morning. Thank you, uh, Senator Scavill, for having uh, all of us here this morning to talk about our, um, our experiences and our thoughts on this vaccine mandate. Uh, I am a pilot at United Airlines. Uh, I've been an airline pilot for almost 32 years. And um, I'm also a member of a group that formed in response to this mandate called the uh, Airline Employees for Health Freedom. Um, I'll start with how this began with the pandemic. Um, the uh, airline basically said, when you show up for work, wear a mask, and we're gonna take your temperature, check your temperature. And initially, we went to a room, an employee took our temperature with a scanner. We put a tag on our ID, so everybody knew we were checked that day and we were good to go. Eventually, that was automated by a machine, so it's no real cost to the airline. You went into a room, you put your employee ID number into that machine, it scanned you, and you went to work. Piece of cake. Um, in May, last May, our union had a letter of agreement with the airline that um, in the very beginning of that agreement, it says there won't be any mandate. Um, a pilot's choice to get a, the vaccine would be an individual choice. So later in that weather, um, letter, it also said, we're gonna pay pilots who, who get the shot. And just to keep this really simple, it's basically $4,000 to get the shot to an airline pilot, which I wasn't interested in. Uh, so I'm working, I'm happy, you know, as, as happy as I can be in this environment. Um, thinking I'm not gonna be forced to get the shot. Just as I'm going out the door to go to work on August 6th, the day which well, I'll never forget, um, I hopped on the computer real quick to see the uh, airline news and it said that the airline mandated that we had to have the shot. And I was in absolute shock. So I went to work, I flew the trip, I came back home that night. Uh, I was only able to sleep for four hours. I flew again the next day, <clears throat> tired, stressed, Still in shock. Um, got five hours of sleep that night, and then I flew on August 8th. And um, I haven't called, I have, I've been calling out sick since then because I just don't feel like I'm in good shape to be flying a passenger jet. Because um, not only do you need to be physically in tip top shape, but you need to be uh, emotionally well and not stressed and sleeping well. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sleeping terribly. Um, um, I'm waking up around two in the morning and I'm chewing onto the Tums because I'm getting a lot of heartburn lately also. So it's physically affecting me. Um, also, I used to teach um, a group of kids how to build an airplane. That was on Mondays. I had two kids in each uh, session through the day. Uh, I quit that because, again, I'm tired. I can't concentrate. Uh, I'm not in a very good mood, generally speaking. I'm just not in the right place in my mind to be teaching kids how to build an airplane. Plus the airplane theoretically is gonna fly one day and um, hopefully I wouldn't make a mistake in that process. So, um, so the kids are kind of suffering also because I haven't been teaching them. Um, but I've, I've never been threatened or bullied before by uh, an employer and really not by people in general. It's just, I'm not used to that. And it's just, I'm still in shock that this is even happening. The airline talks all the time about respect for one another and don't harass people and discrimination and on and on and on, and yet we're discriminated against, we're harassed, we're bullied and, and threatened. Um, so I've been either out sick or, or on my, my prearranged vacation since that time. Um, I was supposed to be, the, the letter said initially, get the shot by September 27th or you'll be terminated. So in my mind, that was gonna be the end of my career right then. Uh, I did apply for a religious exemption and it was granted. So the response was I'm gonna be put on unpaid leave, personal unpaid leave starting October 2nd. Now unpaid personal leave is basically unemployment. Um, no benefits, uh, I have to pay the company's share of the medical plan but, but I'm unemployed is, is the bottom line. Uh, so um, it's not a reasonable accommodation and other employees felt the same way. So I'm gonna assume, I guess, maybe there's 3,000 of us um, in a lawsuit against the airline that this is not a reasonable accommodation. I mean, for a year and a half, it was fun to show up and wear a mask and have your temperature checked and all of a sudden that's not good. Beyond that, 
the airline told the unvaccinated employees they must wear the N95 mask or the KN95 mask. It's really a respirator, and my understanding is you're supposed to be trained to wear it, that you have to be fitted to it, that there's, you just don't throw it on like a cloth mask. And that's not being done. We've had employees passing out and getting sick at work. And uh, in my written testimony, there were some examples. We had the one um, baggage handler who passed out face first onto the belt loader. We had somebody in the office that needed an ambulance or paramedics. We had a flight attendant pass out in flight because they, they, they can't breathe. And some of these flights are, I mean, they're not just down to Florida. I mean, these are flights over to Asia, and it's a long time we're in a mask with flight attendants. Uh, meanwhile, the airline says it's all for our safety, but yet the passengers, passengers are not required to have the shot. They're not required to wear an N95 mask. Flight attendants are trapped into hundreds of people. You don't know if they're vaccinated or not. Um, the gate agent in the terminal, thousands of people strolling through it. Passengers don't have to be that vaccinated, don't have to wear an N95 mask. The, the airline didn't tell the TSA in there to wear a mask and get vaccinated until the Port Authority police. The, uh, the vendors and the store, stores that are in there, those people, I mean, so it makes no sense uh, to me in, in that point. Uh, meanwhile, for the employees that wear the, the N95 mask, it's very much like the Star of David or the Scarlet Letter. Every employee knows if you see an employee with an N95 mask, they're unvaccinated. Now, you might support them. Mm -hmm. right? you, might, you might be totally, you hate that person when I get the vaccination. Uh, I heard from one of my friends um, checking up on me, um, what I was doing. He said a couple of the flight attendants were asking about me, what I was doing, and he said they were very upset that they took the shot. They're very unhappy with themselves that they did that, and they were unhappy that the airline put them in that position. Uh, I heard from two flight attendants yesterday uh, on a, like a telegram chat. Um, see. We're in a law case, and it keeps moving the, uh, the day for our leave. So now we're going to leave tomorrow. We, so today, we're sitting here, we don't know if this is our last day before we start going out without a paycheck. Um, but these flight tents chatted with me that they were able to pick up a, a trip for today to get the last 10 hours of pay before we might be going on leave. Back there, we have one of my friends from work. Oh, they're both here, Kyle and uh, Stephanie, two more pilots from the airline. They have six young children. I mean, they're just starting out. They don't know if they can be on paid leave tomorrow. I mean, we got mouths to feed there. The, the airline doesn't care. Can I ask you, in, on a plane, isn't the air quality there supposed to be better than anywhere? It's supposed to be the best on the planet. Yeah, yes. so, so what is the, what's the problem? I, I, during the whole pandemic, I flew with no, no issues. Yeah. You got me. I can't answer that question. We have to get Scott Kirby here to, to answer that one. Um, so that's, that's really just my story. Just, I, I don't want to take up too much more time, but Thanks, just know that the employees are, uh, those of us that are holding, not complying, we're suffering because they keep moving our date. We, we can't even plan when we're going to go unpaid. And then the ones that took the shot, they're suffering at work, they're getting ill, they're passing out, and uh, some of the employees are, are supporting them, but others are not supporting them. So thank you for letting me speak today. Thank you. Allison? 